sure do, and we're back. We've lost a good deal of the of the gain we made last November. And uh, I don't know. I have the problem, you know, my practical political problem. Uh, in the Senate, uh, the attorney, uh, Bobby Kennedy and Teddy were for uh, the uh, 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 bill of blanket repeal of the poll tax. I told the Attorney General to repeal it anywhere in the world he could as quickly as he could that I would like from the vote at 18 and I would like to repeal the poll tax. And uh, he came up with his lawyers and he says that the best way to repeal it is to establish discrimination and I can establish it in all the states but Vermont. But they'll bring the case on Vermont and that'll be the case that they'll take to the court. And they will not hold that it's a discriminatory in Vermont because it's not. It doesn't even apply to the poor. And he said, I'll lose it there. Now, these boys are not good lawyers, and they just they won't stand up. So I have to take his judgment. But I didn't get out and quarrel about it one way or the other. But the Senate finally followed the Attorney General when they understood it, and even the boys themselves did. And that passed the Senate. But while they were talking about it, McCormick was afraid that somebody would be stronger for the Negro than he was. So he picked up the Kennedy argument that made the Senate over in the House. So he came out red hot for a complete repeal. So he and the Attorney General are on opposite sides now. But the Attorney General's got no choice because the Speaker's going to put it in there. So that's going to be a different bill from the Senate bill. So then when, if we beat off McCullough, if we win with him, we've still got one bill in the Senate and one in the House. That's what the Southerners, the smart parliamentarians, want us to do. They want your wife to go one direction and you to go the other. Then the kids don't know which one to follow. So they've got, to, they've got that happen. Well, then we go to a conference. And suppose we get them all in a room and you come and talk to them and everybody else talk to them and said, please get your agreement. We're willing to follow the Attorney General. Uh, you get them agreed on it. Then they got to go back to Judge Smith to get him to give a rule to get the conference report up. That just makes it, we'll never have to do that, because that, he won't give it. So then we got to notify him and then give him 21 days notice, and they want to get out of here Labor Day. And they're playing for that time. Now, they've been doing that for 35 years that I've been here, and I've been watching them do it. And the only times that we beat them is when I beat them in 57, and when I beat them in uh, 60, and when I beat them in 63. And uh, uh, this year we got to beat them again, but that's what they're doing, and you can't beat them unless you know what they're doing. And uh, that's about it. So I would say there are about two things that ought to be done. You ought to have the strongest man that can speak for you, and the most knowledgeable legislative-wise, authorized to speak and authorized to tell people, like the speaker, that uh, what you want. You don't want this fight uh, going on, and, and uh, you ought to find out who you believe you can trust. If you can trust me, if you can trust the Attorney General, if you can't trust us, why well, trust uh, Teddy Kennedy or whoever you want to trust, and then get behind them and see that, uh, that they take the thing, because I'll give every bit ounce of energy and uh, ability, if any, that I have to passing uh, the most effective bill can be written. You, you helped, uh, I think, dramatize and bring it to a point where I could go before the Congress in that night session. And I think that was one of the most effective things that ever happened. But uh, you had worked for months to, uh, to help create the sentiment that supported it. Now, the trouble is that fire's gone out. We've got a few coals on it, and we've got to put some more cedar back on it and put a little coal oil on it. Roy sent them a wire yesterday, but they just put a wire in their file. Uh, what, what they got to do is have uh, you and Roy and Whitney Young and Phil Randolph and uh, Farmer and some of these fellows, any of you can work together, come sit in the hotel room and talk to your people and get your reports 
and watch it for a day or two and be able to talk to men like Speaker McCormick and like the majority leader and tell them what you want them to do. Because this morning, the vice president, now he is very, very strong for you. And he, he is, a, his heart and soul is in this. Now he said, please, man, let's don't go to conference and let Judge Smith keep us another 21 days. Let's don't get in a fight among ourselves. And the attorney general is right, and let's get language, and the leadership conference is ready to go along on modified language, and I've got it here in my pocket. But McCormick said, oh, no, they'll, they'll, they'll do it, and when we do it, then they'll come in and blame me, and I'm going to go for the strongest thing I can go for so nobody can blame me. And I said, well, what are you going to do when the court holds it's uh, no good and throws it out? Where are you going to be? Well, that would be down the road a long time. So that's where we are. So I think uh, my recommendation would be that you get the best lawyer that you and Roy and the rest of you have and get him to talk to uh, Katzenbach. And if he has confidence in Katzenbach, follow Katzenbach's legal judgment and come in here and follow my political judgment and see if we can get a bill passed. I did see it. I was distressed. I do want to talk to you. I'd welcome a chance to review with you uh, uh, my problems and our alternatives there. And I, I not only know you have a right, I think you have a duty as a minister and uh, as a leader of, uh, of uh, millions of people to uh, give them a sense of purpose and direction. And uh, uh, I have an obligation to do that, and I'll just welcome an opportunity to give you uh, uh, my uh, views and uh, problems I have, because for 20 months I have, uh, well, a Republican leader at a press conference this afternoon, Ford demanded I bomb Hanoi, and I have tried to, my, I've tried to do my best to, uh, I've lost about 264 lives up to now, and I could lose 265,000 mighty easy, and I'm trying to keep those zeros down and uh, at the same time uh, not trigger a conflagration that would be worse if we pulled out. I can't stay there and do nothing. And 
unless I bomb, they run me out right quick. That's the only pressure we have. And if, uh, if they'll quit bombing, if they'll quit coming in, if they'll quit tearing up our roads and our highways and quit uh, taking over our camps, bombing our planes and destroying them, or well, we'll quit the next day if they'll just leave the folks alone. But they won't do it. So the only pressure we can put on is to try to hold them back as much as we can by taking their bridges out, delaying them, by taking out their ammunition dumps and destroying them, by taking out their radar stations and, and permit them to shoot down our planes. Now, that's what we've been doing. A good many people, including the military, think that's not near enough. I ought to do a lot more. But I've tried to keep it to that so I won't escalate it and get into trouble with China and with Russia, and I don't want to be a warmonger. At the same time, if I didn't do that, I'd stayed as long as I could the other way. I held up till February after I came in in November. I went from November to November and from November to February. But uh, they they kept coming. They just kept coming, and I couldn't stand it any longer. I had to get out or do it. Now I'm doing it with a restraint and with the best judgment that I know how. If I pulled out, I think that our commitments would be no good anywhere. I think it would immediately trigger a, a situation in Thailand. It would be just as bad as it is in Vietnam. I think we'd be right back to the Philippines with the problems. I think we'd, uh, the Germans would be scared to death that our commitment to them was no good. And uh, God knows what we'd have other places in the world. I think it's the situation we had in uh, Lebanon. I think it's the situation we had in Formosa. I think it's the situation we had in Greece, and Turkey, and Iran, and Truman, and Eisenhower, and none of these people allowed them to go in and take these people's freedom away from them. And I'm trying. I didn't get us into this. And we got into it in 54. Eisenhower and Kennedy were in it deep. There were 33,000 men out there when I came into the presidency. Now, I don't want to pull down the flag and come home running with my tail between my legs, particularly if it's going to create more problems than I got out there. And it would, according to all of our best judges. Uh, on the other hand, I don't want to get us in war with China and Russia, so I've got a pretty tough problem, and uh, I'm not all wise. I pray every night to get direction and uh, judgment and leadership uh, that permit me to do what's right. But uh, when you come in, I'll just welcome a chance to have the Secretary of State talk to you, the Secretary of Defense, or any of our people. I'll give you all I know, and I appreciate very much your attitude and and your uh, desire to be uh, helpful, and I know that is your desire, as it always has been in our dealings together.